That's what I'm talking about right there. There he goes. And he's just, he's just a little guy. Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? Huh? Hey. That <laughs> would not happen if Henry was here. I'm going to talk about the value and the importance of protecting your investments. You're investing time, energy, some currency. You come out here to the Ozarks or any place for that matter, and you're going to start up this new property and venture of starting to be more intentional, responsible, healthy, and sustainable. Well, one of those things is growing food. That's typically things that people get into quite a bit. And they put plants out there. They, they work the soil. They do all these kinds of things, making nice beds and, and whatnot. What are you going to do to protect that? What are you going to do to protect that? Because most people aren't thinking like that. Now, if you come out here in the Ozarks, and especially if you're going to come very rural like I am, and, and, and it's pretty rural out here in, in, in most of the places, very low population density, except for the wildlife. That's pretty high. So, if you don't know, um, I just lost Henry. Henry was my pal. He was my four-legged best friend. Closest thing I had to a friend was that four-legged dog. And he was a great Pyrenees, a large guardian dog, LGD, people call them. And uh, just a guard dog, um, family dog, because they're very affectionate, they're very loyal, a very good dog. And I just lost him um, about two weeks ago. About 8 o'clock at night, I didn't know what happened to him and everything. He'd been in the shop because he got, I thought, overheated. And then he finally passed away about 8 o'clock at night. And uh, so I grabbed a chair, popped a beverage, and sat there, you know, critiquing myself. Okay, what could I have done? What did I miss? And you know, all these kinds of things that I do to myself sometimes. Well, um, boy, that was a chore. So anyway, um, I finally buried him about 2 or 3 o'clock at night when I figured out where I was going to put him. And, uh, and he's a 143-pound mammoth of a dog he was a big boy <laughs> he was a big boy so since Henry has been gone I'm gonna share a few things number one there was a possum in his kennel when I come out here in the evening 
and I thought, well, you little sucker, I didn't do anything to him. I just ran him off and kicked him off down in the woods. And then three days later, the third day after I had to place Henry in the ground, when I can't get up in the morning, I come down the stairs and that window is about at the top of the stairs. And I look out these windows when I'm getting up in the morning, just checking things out. As I do that morning, uh, three days after he's gone, there's two deer standing right here. And then there's one just standing right about here in the driveway. And then I look down here toward the gate, you know, where the road's way down there, a couple hundred yards. There's one here by the goji berries, and there's one standing there at the blackberries that I planted up through here. I looked out the window, and this way, right behind these logs, one right behind the other, two deer going that way. I suspect that they were probably heading toward them strawberry plants. So that's three days after Henry's gone. Now then, Let's see, it was uh, a couple days, for the next couple days after that, uh, when Henry is gone, what I would do is I'd come out here toward the uh, garden. In the mornings, early mornings, late evenings, and stuff like that, I'd be coming out here just like I am now, kind of slow, and I know I just saw one just jumping. There he is. He is, I'm going to try to put my finger on him right, eh, somewhere right here. Watch him, he'll hop as soon as we move closer to him. There he goes, out in the woods. Little whitetail, rabbit. And so what they're doing, they're coming up here and getting this clover, but they've also been, you know, having their way on all my beet tops. Now the deer don't care for the beet tops too much, but evidently these rabbits do. That is about every morning and every evening and just now I don't know if you, you can pick him up on the camera that was just one the others probably took off sooner but I've already named them in the last video breakfast lunch and dinner I think there's uh, a, another one I'll just call him brunch or uh, midnight snack if there's any more I'll name them too I'll call them bugs or Roger or something to that effect Whew, that sun's still beaming down hot. Now then, three nights ago, I'm up in the cabin, in the loft, sitting there at my desk, and I'm hearing some noise. And Bonnie, I know she's inside with me, and I swear it's out there on the front porch. And I've been bringing Bonnie in. Now, if you don't know Bonnie, she's a little black and white dog you might catch around every now and then. I don't see her now. But she's what I call my little throwaway dog. Somebody dropped her off out here in the middle of nowhere, about three quarters of a mile up the dirt road. And uh, long story short, end up taking her in. She's been with me for about, uh, it's coming on five years now. Um, so I bring her inside because she's about 70% blind. And this is a guesstimation, but it, she's pretty bad off. She's about 70% blind, and I would say about 80% or 90% deaf. I'm not going to get rid of her and I'm not going to throw her away. And she loved Henry, the Great Pyrenees. And he liked her and he protected her. So she comes in at night now uh, because she's not going to be able to take care of herself. So anyway, I'm hearing this noise downstairs and it sounds like it's coming from the front porch. So what I do is I get my lead dispensing device. I get a headlamp and I'm quietly coming downstairs. The lights are off down, downstairs in the cabin and on the front porch. So I turn the front porch lights on. I pull this little curtain uh, by the door and I look down and there's a possum there. All he's doing is just, you know, finishing up Bonnie's food that she didn't uh, uh, complete for that day. So I open the door. The lights are on, my headlamp's on and everything, and I got my device and I got a bead on, on, on this possum because he just kind of froze. And I'm thinking, I don't feel like at 10, 11 o'clock at night having a mess here on the front porch and then I got to get dressed and I got to get a bucket and take him and up the field and, and, and dispose of the carcass because I didn't really feel like eating. I do that because the next day or two days later the turkey vultures will have that thing anything i throw out in that field they'll have it cleaned up in a matter of a day undisturbed two days at the most so he's two feet away from him so i just real quickly reached up and i kicked him real hard in the ass and he took off in the woods so that was just three nights ago 
So now, I don't know if you remember, but I made a little mention of um, some blueberries. I've been trying to grow blueberries on this hard, rocky clay ground out here on this property in the woods for the last couple of years. The starts that I got, they were so scrawny and sickly looking and everything, but I've been trying everything I can. And I don't know what the hell I'm doing, you know, when it comes to blueberries yet, especially on ground like this. So let me show you what I came to this morning. Now this is classic armadillo. A possum might do this as well, but this is pretty typical and classic armadillo. And uh, for the last few decades, those armadillos have been coming up into our territory here from Louisiana and Texas. And uh, they're highly populated around here right now. So that was what I woke up to this morning. Now this is just all in two weeks and it's going to continue to get worse until I do something about it. Now what I can do, and I'm not a fan of, I don't want to have to, I'm getting here in the shade. Um, what I don't want to have to do is I don't want to have to put a fence around every damn thing I do around here. I just, I just don't care for it. So just as a, a side note here to reiterate, the LGD isn't just protecting livestock it's protecting you and your property and your investment and efforts into things that you're trying to grow for instance down here my goji berries and blackberries they're having a heyday because there's nothing here keeping them away and up here on the side of the cabin you know i catch them up here especially the armadillos and right here on this little bed up here they're up here and they can have a heyday and tear things up i'm not planting stuff and and trying to uh grow herbs or any types of vegetables just for the hell of it so these things can come up here and just wreak havoc on all my energy and and time and maybe a little bit of currency that i've placed into this stuff out here that i've done this here um just got some uh, uh spearmint hosta some flowers cannon lily tiger lily chocolate mint there's a comfrey back up in here now they don't bother the plants they're not after these types of plants but they come in here and they dig and, and because i use wood chips and I've, i develop soil and just about everything i do out here it's a constant effort for me they come in here and dig all this stuff up. This used to be from tree to tree almost with these uh, these big, I think they're called cannon lilies. Well, they come in here and just destroy this thing and digging all that up. Even though they're not interested in the plants, they still cause a lot of damage, especially that damn armadillo. And they come up here every daggum night just about with Henry being gone. Ty, uh, lilac here, I done this. Took the time and effort so we could have a little lilac out here. Well, the deer come up here now, and they're starting to eat up on the leaves of the lilac. I didn't think they would eat the lilac, but they are. Ain't nothing else getting up there eating those leaves. Trying to do calendula, a calendula, I'm sorry, out here in this little thing. I think I might have one little straggly uh, plant there that's going to make it, so hopefully there's more seed in here. And armadillos come in here because it's filled up around this little ring that I made and you know it's nice and cute but it took my time and it took my energy and I don't want all my efforts to go to waste now can you imagine just like out there at the garden and the beds and everything having to put some sort of fencing around every little thing this is the value of having a good dog or two around your property other than just protecting livestock and miss little bonnie there being in her condition she is just not capable of dealing with them because it's going to be a matter of time before the coyotes start pushing closer he kept them away as well henry being gone i already knew he did a good job uh, a great Pyrenees, and if you can get an Anatoly Pyrenees mix, they're they're wonderful breeds, and there's other breeds, just any good guard dog, a German Shepherd, anything like that, that doesn't have a tendency to run off on you, but uh, that's one of the qualities about a Pyrenees. Uh, they don't take off from that which they are um, claim the, as their territory and what they're trying to protect. My cost 
into Henry because it takes quite a bit to feed a 140 pound dog and make him satisfied. <laughs> so there's, uh, there, you know, being a good steward to him, it, there's a cost to it. But the return that you get besides the companionship and the protection for your family and your livestock, and you're part of his livestock, a lot of Pyrenees will look at you that way. He'll protect your garden, your beds, your plants and everything if they're in your immediate AO, like mine are, uh, because I'm here in the hole in the middle of the woods. Um, and ever since he's been gone, things have been slowly getting worse and worse and it's going to continue to do so so i think i'm going to have to come out here in the evenings with my lead dispensing tool and headlamp and maybe uh, some other force multiplying device and handle some business until i can get this rectified I, I i don't want to have to come around here and fence everything off i may go ahead and set up my electric i got electric fence for the garden but uh I have no need for it when Henry was around. There was a big return in any kind of investment that Henry might have cost me in vet bills or his grooming, you know, having to brush him out because he was a great Pyrenees with that, with that double coat and the cost of his food. So if you're getting a piece of property, you got livestock, you got to protect them, fence or dogs or both. If you're going to do vegetable garden, you know, you're going to do herbs or anything, fruits and vegetables, trees, bushes, stuff like that, you're going to have to protect them. So you have to make a decision. Do you want to fence everything off? Do you have that capability like being on uh, uh, five acres of clearing and you got everything contained within that one or two acres? Then fencing might not be a bad thing. But I'm not going to go around here doing that in these woods. I don't like it and it's it's just as costly and I'll probably get more out of the dog than I will the fencing anyway. So think about this and the value of the guardian dog, you know, uh, LGD, whatever you want to call them. Just about all dogs have a, a purpose and a value if you have them in your home or on your property. Even the small dogs, you know, I had a chihuahua out here one time. I mean, she was a ferocious little thing. She probably couldn't do much, but by God, she was a damn good early warning device. So all your dogs are gonna be at least that at a, as a minimum. I really wanted to bring that up and I'm, you know, it's because I'm thinking, man, the value of Henry and, and this would be holding true for just everybody out there that's looking to get a piece of property and you're wanting to go off grid or anything kind of like that. Ask any rancher, ask any uh, big farmer, anything like that, dairy farmer, the value of having dogs or canine friends is pretty way up there. They're pretty way up there. I mean, unless you want to get an ass you know, a, a jackass, a donkey, um, I, I, I don't think I'd be comfortable with them unless I was running cattle. Um, it's kind of risky with some, you know, if you're running goats or sheep because some donkeys, boy, they're temperamental. And, uh, but they'll damn sure take a coyote and <laughs> kill them, and your dog <laughs> if you got dogs around them too. They don't mess around with canines. So anyway, I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, just share it and pass it along. Meanwhile, I'm going to get out of here and have a nice day. Have a nice evening. May all your branches become full of fruit. And I will see you next time. Hoorah!